I want to start by saying that for anyone who's online right now, I've got a great foundation course to the Break Free Philosophy, which is what we're going to be covering in today's live. And to access that, the link is going to be in the bio. So make sure that before you wrap up, you click on there, enter your email, where you're going to get five videos over five weeks on the different dimensions that I speak about in this framework, covering the mind, the body, relationships, the material world, as well as money. So, okay, so look, we've covered already that thoughts. What, what happens when you're thinking? Thoughts lead to emotions and feelings. Emotions and feelings lead to action. And action repeatedly becomes a habit. And then the habit, along with a belief, becomes a ritual. So the difference between the ritual and the habit is one is non-negotiable and one can be broken sometimes. But effectively, when you're changing your thoughts, you're changing your life. So how aware are you of the thoughts in your mind? You know, because it's chattering away non-stop. But what is it thinking? Are you thinking positive things from your perspective? And I say from your perspective because what might be positive for you might be negative for someone else or vice versa. But from your perspective, what are the thoughts going through your mind? How positive are they? Or how negative are they from your perspective, right? Because again, what we've covered before, you may recall, is that we have anywhere from 10,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. And as per the National Science you know, uh, Foundation in the US, 80% are negative. So again, how much of your mind is thinking these negative thoughts? Because ultimately, thoughts have energy. And this energy can either be uplifting or it can drain you. Again, it can be uplifting or it can drain you. So when you're thinking, be more aware of what you're thinking and start asking yourself, is this lifting me up? Which is great. Or is it pulling me down? You know, what's the energy behind that thought? Trying to call me on WhatsApp. Okay. And so, I want to give you an example of these thoughts and how powerful they are, right? Imagine a time when you said to yourself, Ooh, I, I put in too much into my calendar, it's too busy, I hope something clears up. And then you get an email from someone saying, I can't make today's meeting because I'm busy or something happened and I can be rescheduled. And you're going, oh, thank God, because that's exactly what I was hoping for. But you see, it, it wasn't just a coincidence. The thoughts had energy. The thoughts had energy, which ultimately were felt by the other person. And that resulted in the meeting getting canceled. So how many times do you have that when you think something and it actually becomes a reality? So again, be more conscious of your thoughts because you don't want to be thinking the wrong thing, you know, such as, oh, I wish that person drops dead. Because <laughs> imagine if they did, that'd be horrible, right? So your thoughts equals energy, which results, it manifests into reality. Now, I want to give you an example of two such experiences that have happened for me of how changing the thoughts had a massive effect on the outcome. So before I continue, audio is not clear and there is an echo. Maybe it's my office environment. Let me see here. I could just put myself on mute and switch myself off. Let's see, hopefully that helps. Audio is not clear, still not clear. Okay, let me adjust the handset one time. I pressed a lot of buttons. How's the audience now? Can someone give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a, a comment? 
few more people joining in. Perfect, sound is good again. Okay, great. All right, so where were we? I was going to share two experiences on, on, on how thoughts can change the energy of the situation, right? So this one of them is from a mountain climb. I was, you know, we were, we've spent about five days on the mountain now already, and we're about 6,000 meters above sea level, closer to 6,300. And we're just about to get to the summit. And we were told that on the way to the summit, you're gonna have three walls. Now, what is a wall when you're climbing up? It's essentially something that's relatively steep where you have to you know, use your ice axes to go up as well as your feet, you've got your crampons. So basically these devices with spikes on them that help you dig your shoes into the snow or ice and then climb up. So we're climbing up and we were told there were three walls. Now, you know, for the, cl <laughs> for the climbing team, when it's a wall that was, you know, with a little break and another wall, they counted that as one. But in our mind, at the moment you had that little break, we thought, okay, that this next one is number two. So when we got to the final wall, we're like, we're done, we're, we're finished, I can't make it up. And I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, we've been on the mountain for five days, we've done 99% of the journey, we have that 1% left, but our mind is starting to play tricks and it's changing the energy of the situation. And there's four of us who are climbing up with the guides and I'm, I'm hearing this energy shift. I'm hearing, oh, yeah, I can't do it. I'm tired. I'm finished. I want to go down. And I'm thinking, no, we, we've done so much. We're so far. How can we say no? And I said, I don't want to speak to these people because otherwise I might get absorbed by, you know, their energy might absorb me. And then next thing I know, I'm going to be thinking, I can't do it either. So I said, no, I need to change. I'm, I'm aware of my thoughts. I'm starting to think negative. I need to shift. I need to shift. I need to start thinking that I am going to do it. Not, I hope I can make it or I'll try. I can and I will. And so I said that to myself. I can and I will. I can and I will. I can and I will. And I didn't even ask anyone. I just took the ice axes out and I started climbing up. And then next thing you knew, the other three followed and all four of us made it to the summit. So just by shifting the energy, by shifting the thoughts, can have such a huge impact on everything around you. Because we went from, you know, no, no alignment between the members, thinking maybe we're going to start going back down, to we all make it to the summit. And so another one I want to bring to your attention as well, and you know, this one's physically related as well, because... My trainer, he comes to me and he goes, let's do something special to welcome in 2020, right? So this was before this whole craziness happened. And I said to myself, okay, let's do it. Let's see what he's got in hands. And he says, let's do 2,020 meters of lunges to welcome in 2020. And then my first thought was, are you crazy? I said, who even thinks that? And then I stopped myself. I said, okay, no, 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 Sahil, wait. Why are you saying it's crazy? Why are you thinking that it's not possible? You know, I was trying to be more aware of my thoughts. I said, if he's saying it he, it, he knows me, he's my trainer, he knows what I'm capable of. If he believes I can do it, then I can too. And so I said, okay, I'm, no, no, sorry, I apologize. Let's do it. And then I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to not do it. I trained for it. In my mind, I kept saying, I am going to do it. And for everyone that did it together, we were about six or seven people. Who, and all of us initially thought, what or no or impossible or crazy. We all had, became more aware and we shifted our mindset and said, yes, I can, I will, I am. Now imagine if I'm telling you I'm going to try how does that sound? It's not convincing him enough. But when I say I am, I'm going to do it, it's going to happen. It's got that energy with it. And that energy is elevating me rather than pulling me down. So again, be more conscious of your thoughts. You know, you're having troubles with, it, with someone, you know, you, it's a challenge in a relationship. 
you know, how many times have you tried to avoid those confrontational conversations? And I say confrontational because that's what's in your head. Ooh, if I say this, he's going to say that, or she's going to say this, and it's going to go bad, and I don't know. And how about thinking, this relationship matters. It's important. I'm going to approach it with love, and we are going to get closer together. Now you're going in with a complete different shift in your mind. Your energy has changed. And guess what? They can sense that energy. So again, start being more conscious about your thoughts. Because by changing your thoughts, you're shifting your energy and that's going to drive stronger results. And for those who need that little extra push on this topic, ask yourself the last time you had a lot of fear. What did that do? I mean, look at the world we live in today. The world, the entire earth has been engulfed by fear because of a virus. How has that shifted the energy of you and everyone around? Now, I'm not saying ignore it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But be more conscious of how you're thinking. Because if you're living with fear, how is that affecting everything around you? How is that affecting your productivity, your relationships with people? The joy that you have inside, your energy, it's, 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 it's draining. But what about if we shift and accept? We accept what's going on around us and then start looking for those little wins and saying, I am going to get through this. Yes, I'll get knocked down. Perhaps my family will get knocked down. Perhaps someone might even pass away. And I'm not saying this theoretically. I've had three family members since the pandemic started pass away. It's no joke. But am I going to let that build on the fear? Or am I going to say, no, okay, this is what it is. I can take action. I can take conscious decisions to be more cautious, to wear a mask, whatever it might be to make me happy. But I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to let this fear hold me back. But I had to accept. So again, be more conscious of your thoughts because if you're constantly on the run, you don't know what you're thinking all the time and the next thing you know, you're doing something you wish you hadn't. So it's a little bit like what I spoke about last week. Take that pause and just spend more time with yourself and ask yourself again, are my thoughts elevating me? Or is the fear in my mind dragging me down so thank you all for listening i've got a few questions here so i'm going to start going through them i've got how does one keep up the energy when all seems lost agree on the energy shift aspect so i have a tool right that i use on myself that i would love to share with you people have different methods to elevate themselves. In my case, I use certain memories, right? So I have a trigger. So for example, I will have something on my desk, like I've got a, a, a smiley face. And you know, every time I'm starting to feel down, I'll look at it, it's triggers. Or you have a photograph of some a memory, you know, or it's an achievement that you've made. Because here's the thing. And this one is a really good one. You know, as we go through life, it's like this. We can all agree that it's up and down, right? It's never straight up or straight down or flat, whatever I have it is for you. It's always up and down. Now, the question is, when you're up, it's great. But when you're down, you sometimes get lost in that valley. And then you only see the darkness around. And so your energy starts to shift because you, you're just constantly thinking negative. And then what happens is your valley gets deeper and deeper and deeper. But there's this great concept I came across, and it's called the cookie jar. So you essentially have a jar, but instead of cookies, because, you know, we don't want that little sugar high, which just takes us up and then drags us back down again. We want to have something that elevates us. So inside the cookie jar, instead of having cookies, take little pieces of paper and write down every single achievement you've had in your life that you feel is an achievement. Now, one piece of paper is one achievement. So keep writing them in and then fold them and put them in the cookie jar. So whenever you want to elevate yourself and energize yourself, open the cookie jar, pull out the paper, open it, read it, and go, 
Ah, and then if you're still not energized enough, pull out another one, open it, and keep doing that until you realize that, look, you've achieved so much in life. This is a temporary phase being lost in this valley. You will come out, you will rise. It's just a matter of when. So use this technique or use the trigger, like I said earlier, anything, it's a, a visual, a sound, some trigger that elevates you. You know, it's like that song. I, mean, I know you have a song. Everyone has that song, no matter what mood they're in, when that song comes on, you just feel good. So find that trigger. Let's see another question here. As they say, what our mind can conceive and believe, it will achieve. Absolutely. Because again, thoughts have energy, results in emotions and feelings, action, eventually habits, and then rituals. So thank you for sharing that, Gautam. Let's see. Are you supportive of breaking free from reading and watching the news to disconnect from the negativity? Wow. Beautiful question. Absolutely. Look, a lot of people tell me, I haven't read a newspaper in years. And people say, oh, that's being ignorant. You don't know what's going on. Listen, any big news, it eventually comes to me. Someone sends me a message on WhatsApp or someone calls me or it comes up on, you know, during discussion. And in my industry, if I'm looking for certain specific news, I just go search for it. But tell me, what is the purpose of reading something where every day it's this many more cases, this many more deaths? I mean, it hasn't changed. There's no shift. But yet you choose to constantly read the same negativity day after day after day. What purpose does that serve? What benefit is that adding in your life? Nothing. You know that it's not a great scene out there. You know that you have to be cautious. You know you have to be careful. So what is, that, what is reading that negative, negative news going to do for you? Nothing. All it's doing is you're thinking more about it and that again is shifting your energy to where you don't want to go. Oh, we've got more people. Yana, Anuj, Pooja, everyone, welcome. Shout out to all of you for coming on. If you've missed what I've said, this is all going to be online soon as well. But uh, I'm open to a few more questions before we wrap up. Let's see what we have here. So I've got a question here. Can you share your morning routine? Yeah, so morning routine. So that's, that's one way I energize myself every day. You know, it's, it's, it's like the battery, right? You, you've healed overnight and a lot of people choose to read the news or, or, or pick up their phone first thing in the morning and next thing they know they've read something or seen something they don't like. Now, I choose to elevate myself every morning because I want to start with, a, with, with high energy. And how do I do that? I do that through a routine which involves movement to get the blood flowing, breath work to get oxygen into my body and oxygenate my cells, um, with meditation to balance mind and heart. And then finally, I journal and I write down things that elevate me as well as my top priorities of the day. So that's, that's how I raise my energy in the morning so that even then after that, if I read something I don't like or someone says something I don't like, it's going to knock me down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, but I'm still above ground and I'm going to keep rocking it. We've got Dr. Marcus. Welcome. Here's another question. Does thinking consciously have the power to manifest? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, again, it's, 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 it's that time when you say, oh, you know, I'm, you know, it's, how many times has it happened to you? Let's just take this scenario where you've thought about someone and then within, you know, you haven't spoken to them for weeks, months, maybe even a year and you've thought about them and the next thing you know, they call you or they email you or they message you on social media and you go, oh my goodness, I was just thinking of him. I was just thinking of her and they message you. So absolutely the thought can manifest into reality. But again, be more conscious when you're thinking about certain things, what's happening next? Dr. Marcus, good to see you live. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to be live. So if there are no more questions, one final announcement for everyone that joined. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you share, you like it. But more importantly, I'm offering a five 
set of videos which is part of the Break Free Foundation course. It's completely complimentary. All you have to do is go into the bio and enter, you know, the link that is in the bio and you can enter your email address to receive the same. And it will share with you, I will share the Break Free Framework which covers the different dimensions of life which is basically mind, body, people, material things as well as a bonus topic of focusing on money. So have a lovely evening on this Sunday wherever in the world you are and I look forward to next week.